Right, before we go on to do some examples of how you use thirds, the one thing we need to review are the um, rules that are going to help us do this. And the first rules we're going to look at is the fact that the square root of x squared is equal to x, and also if you square root x and then square it, that also equals x. And these two are very important concepts when dealing with questions involving square roots, to understand that square and square root undo each other. Also, the next rule we want to look at is the fact that the square root of x times by the square root of x is simply, obviously, x square root of x squared, and that equals x. And from the fact that the square root of x times the square root of x must equal x, we can realise if we've got root a times root b, this will equal the square root of a times b. And similarly, if you follow that logical rule further, you'll realise that the square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. And we'll be using these um, rules for the rest of our questions. So our first question we're going to do is the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. And as we just seen already, you can think of that in several ways. You can think of that as 5 times 5 square rooted. And that just equals the square root of 25 which equals 5. Or if you remember the rule of square root of x times square root of x just equals x. We actually just another way to think of this is the same as the square root of 5 squared and that just equals 5. Right, in this next question we're going to work out how we're going to add these things together. So let's just remove the brackets to start off with. 3 plus 5 we're going to write out, plus the square root of 5 even, plus 2 plus the square root of 5. And remember we can write these out in any order because they've all got plus. So that would just be the same as 3 plus 2 which is 5. And then we've got plus the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5. So that gives us two lots of the square root of 5. So this just simply simplifies to two lots of the square root of 5. And we can't simplify this any further. If we were to try and write this as a square uh, um, as all one square root, we could turn this into a square root by writing that 2 is equal to the square root of 4. And then if we times that by the square root of 5, because 2 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, we see we just got the square root of 20, and this doesn't make anything simpler. In fact, once you get down to a number which can only be um, given as a product of individual prime numbers and no squares, we can't simplify this any further, so we can't use this. And I'll show what you what we mean by that shortly. OK, in this one we're going to do exactly the same again. We're going to rewrite this. I'm going to use a bigger pen. We're going to rewrite this and we just get the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 5 minus 2 times the square root of 3. Now we get minus a plus will give us a minus here. That's 4 times the square root of 5. So we have here 3 root 3 minus 2 lots of root 3. And that just gives us 3 lots minus 2 lots is 1 lot of square root of 3. So you might want to think of that as the 1 lot of square root of 3. And here we have plus root 5 minus 4 lots of the square root of 5. So 1 lot minus 4 lots gives us minus 3 lots of the square root of 5. Now much nicer to write this without that 1 there because 1 lot is just itself root 3. Now, because these square roots are different numbers, we can't simplify this any further. Let's look at some simplifications. Here we've got the square root of 121. So, let's think about that. 121, if we were to factorise that, let's do a little factor tree up here, then we just get 11 times 11. which equals the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, which equals 11. Now, the reason I wanted to show you it that way is because that will become very helpful when we do this type of question. Obviously, the square root of 121 is just 11. You should know your square numbers all the way up to 144 minimum, which is the square of 12. You should also really know the square of 13 is 169, the square of 14 is 196, and the square of 15 is 225. Those are all the square numbers all the way up to 15, 
Um, all reasonable mathematicians should know this off the top of their head. Anyway, let's look at this question, because we're going to use this idea of splitting a number up into all the prime numbers to simplify it. So here we have 48. How can we write 48 if we use prime factorization? Let's give ourselves a bit more space. So we've got 48 is equal to 2 times 24, and 24 is 2 times 12, and 12 is equal to 2 times 6, and 6 equals 2 times 3. 75. Let's, prime, let's do a factor tree for that. 5 goes into 75 15 times. Uh, 15 can be split up into 3 times 5. And we can't do any more than that. No way, the nice thing about factor trees is it doesn't matter which way you do them. We could have started off with 25 times 3, and then 25 is 5 times 5, and still got the same answer. And 3, well, that's a prime number, so there's no point worrying about what that is as a factor tree. So if we write this all out, we get square root of 48 is equal to, square root of all these numbers times together, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. times 3. And 75 is the square root of all these numbers times together. 5 times 5 times 3. And we've got minus the square root of 3. Now the object of all of this is to find square numbers. And if you think about it, everywhere you've got a pair, you have a square number. So effectively, you've got square root of 2 times the square root of 2 here. And that just gives you 2. So everywhere you have a pair, you can take it out as a number. So that gives you 2, that gives you 2, and we're just left with the square root of 3 here that we can't square root. Remember, everywhere you've got a pair, you have a square, so that just gives us 5. Because root 5 times root 5 just gives you 5. And then we're left over with the square root of 3 here. And we've just got the minus root 3. So 2 times 2 lots, which gives you 4 lots, plus 5 lots gives us 9 lots, minus 1 lot equals 8 lots of the square root of 3. And that is how we can add these all together. So notice I got these all down to the lowest form, so I took out all the square numbers and left with numbers which are not square numbers under the square root. And funny enough, they all match up to be root 3, so therefore I can add them together because I have 4 lots, 5 lots, minus 1 lot. OK, here we've got the square root of 5 times the square root of 3. And that just gives us the square root of 5 times 3, which is equal to the square root of 15. This, I'm, we've got no numbers to take out, but this is definitely much simpler than writing this. We're going to look at this. Now, we did do the prime factorization of 48 earlier. OK, it was 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So let's write that out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. All square rooted. All over the square root of 3. Now remember, once again, everywhere you've got a pair of numbers, you have a square. So therefore, we can write that as the square root of 4. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is just 2. So that becomes a 2. Similarly, that just becomes another 2. In the same way. And then we just got times. We can't square root that. There's nothing to times it by to turn it into a square root number. So we get 2 times 2 times square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now, because we've got the time, root 3 times all of this, and root 3 on the bottom, we can cancel these root 3s out. So these two will just cancel, because we've got times here and here. If there was a plus here, we wouldn't be able to cancel them, because we don't have root 3 times this 2, not this 2. But because we've got times in between them all, we can cancel that out. And that just leaves us 2 times 2, which gives us 4. So I've cancelled out those two root 3s. Now the next technique we need to do is learn how to rationalise the denominator. Now rationalise the denominator means we turn the bottom of a fraction into a rational number. 
thirds are irrational numbers if there's no square numbers. If you're not square rooting a square number, you have an irrational number. That means you can't write out the decimal of it. Anything you write out as a decimal would just be an approximation because it never reoccurs and it never ends. So, to make calculations easier, what we do is we rationalize the denominators. And the way we do that is we rely on the fact that, as we said earlier, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 equals 3. Yep, you're squaring the number. So let's times both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. Effectively, it's the same as times the whole thing by 1, which doesn't change it. But it does change the top, and it does change the bottom, but in ratio. 5 times the square root of 3 is 5 root 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And what you can see is the number on the bottom, okay, the denominator, is now rational. There is no square roots in it. It's now a whole number. And that's the process called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, let's do another example. So here we can do exactly the same thing. We're going to write that as the square root of 5 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. We choose the square number of the bottom that's going to make this turn into a nice perfect square that square root and gives you a whole number. Root 5 times root 3 is root 15. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. And we can't cancel these down. 3 doesn't go into the square root of 15. You need to be able to take a 3 out of this square root before you can cancel down. And we can't, so therefore we can't cancel down. Now the trickiest type of rationalizing is where you've got some additions and subtractions. And what we always do is we always change the sign of this thing in the middle here. The reason is because we're going to make use of a mathematical property. If you do a plus b times a minus b, when we multiply that out, we get a squared minus b squared when we simplify it. Let me just show you that. a times a is a squared. a times b minus b is minus ab. b times a is the same as ab, doesn't matter which order you do it in, plus ab. Plus b times minus b gives me minus b squared. And we can see that we can cancel those two. Minus ab plus ab just leaves you a squared minus b squared. And you now notice you've got square numbers. So therefore, if these are just square numbers, any square roots will disappear. So whatever the sign is in the middle, so we've got a plus here, we times it by the thing which has the opposite sign in the middle. And that will allow us to use this property to just get square numbers. So we're going to times top and bottom of this by 2 minus the square root of 3. And that will allow us to use that property. So 2 minus the square root of 3. 2 minus the square root of 3. Times top and bottom by the same thing. It won't change the fraction, but it will make it so that the bottom will become rational. So we do five, root 5 times 2. Gives me 2 root 5 is the best way to write it. Root 5 times minus root 3. 3 gives me minus root 15. 1 times 2 gives me 2. And we've got 1 times minus root 3 gives me minus square root of 3. All over, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times minus root 3 is minus 2 root 3. And root 3 times 2 is plus 2 root 3. And root 3 times minus 3, well that just gives me minus. Plus times a minus gives me a minus. And root 3 times root 3 gives me 3. And I can see that these two will cancel out. 1's minus, 1's plus, and are exactly the same size. So that leaves me, I can't add any of these. None of these square roots are the same, so I can't add any of these and simplify them. I'll just have to leave them all as they are. And 4 minus 3 is just 1. So the answer to my question is 2 root 5 minus root 15 plus 2 minus root 3. If you divide by 1, it doesn't change it. And that gives me my final answer.